Thank you. <laughs> that was in my mouth. Thank you. Good check. Yes, migraine's coming. Okay. Thank you. Good boy. I swear he's camera shy. I know that's a really weird thing to accuse a dog of, but he gets really weird like this when I bring the camera out. Um, anyway, hi, I'm Jen. Welcome to, oh my gosh, welcome to Momming with Migraine. For today's video, I wanted to give you guys something tangible. Like, when I was, buddy, can you, can you sit? Thank you. Okay, that works. I was thinking about you guys and pain relief in particular and just trying to think of something that's tangible, that's easy and fast, that can give you guys a lot of relief from your pain, from your tension headaches, or from your migraines. I swear he like either ignores me or has to be the center of every video. I can never get a happy medium. Anyway, I was thinking, what's something that I wish that I had known about right at the beginning of getting my migraines? Or for me in particular, I started getting daily tension headaches before I ever had a migraine, and that was stemming from issues in my neck. I have bone spurs on my neck that we discovered when I was about 20. And I realized, the cranio cradle. I started using it probably, I don't know, between five and 10 years ago. I love it, my husband loves it, I've gotten my friends on it, I got my chiropractor into it and he's telling all his patients about it. It's a really great tool because you can use it at home, you can make it basically as gentle or as firm as you'd like, and it's really great for just myofascial release, for your neck tension, for your headaches, shoulder and trap pain. Okay buddy, outside soon. He just rang his bells to go outside. Where was I? So in this video, I'm gonna go over the cranio cradle and the ways that I like to use it or my favorite positions with it. And I'll also include a link down in the description below so that if it's something that you feel like you might be interested in, you can go ahead and check it out. Let's get going. Sort of funny story, on my way up here, I actually couldn't find the cranio cradle. And then eventually, I found it in my husband's office. Told you, this thing's amazing. The cranio cradle is made out of foam. It's pretty soft, but it's also quite strong, so you can really hit your pressure points with it, but it's not painful in any way. It's heart-shaped from one side. If you look at it from what I consider the back, it's got two big points that feel really good to have, like, on either side of your spine. But sometimes I also tip it up, or I'll tip it this way to use this part of the curvature for a strong angle, this part for a lesser angle. I think that's one of the things that I like the most about this is it feels stable in a lot of different positions and you can really flip it around and use it in different orientations to vary the amount of pressure that you're getting in the spot where you want it. Some people do use it seated and they just put it behind them in their chair. I've only ever used it laying down but those are options. I have used tennis balls in a sock before or the special fancy um, yoga ball type things, lacrosse ball feeling stuff. But I feel like this is a lot more stable and to me that makes it a lot more effective. And since it has so many different angles on it and different sides that I can use, I feel like I'm able to get closer to just the right amount than I ever was able to with something like a cane or balls. <laughs> balls. So I'm not a professional or a therapist or anything. This is just something that I bought online that I'm having a lot of success with. I don't want you guys to like fact check me on any of this. I just wanted to give you my honest experience, let you know how I use it and the kind of relief that I feel from it. If this is something that you feel like might help you, I'll go ahead and link it in the description below and you can go check it out for yourself. That will of course be an affiliate link. That's not why I'm doing this at all. Like I said, I've been recommending this to everyone and their mother for like probably almost a decade, but using my affiliate link will support me at no additional cost to you. And if you go out of your way to use my link, I really appreciate you supporting my channel and helping me make more free videos for you. You ready? Let's get started with some cranio cradle positions. I thought that this would be a good place for me to film because I have this bench behind me, so you guys will be able to see where I am when I'm laying down. But just so you know, you will see like wires coming out of my shirt and stuff because I'm still on my heart monitor and I've got a device that I'm hooked up to, so you might see some wires coming out of my hips. Don't mind them, they're just measuring me. Got stuck on my heart monitor right before I was about to hit on you. Hey, baby. The first position that I'm gonna show you is called base position, and it's called that way because if you just look at the device, it's kind of exactly what you would expect to use it for. As I mentioned, it's a heart shape, and the two bumps of the heart are these two raised edges that feel really good to put on either side of your spine. There's also this little round part, which is awfully head-shaped. So the base position for your cranio cradle is to just place this down on the bed so that your neck is here and your head falls into the hole. That looks like this. 
Now obviously you're supposed to keep looking up, but I want to talk to you. This position is extremely gentle, it just barely puts any pressure at all, and that's good when you're feeling particularly sensitive, like during a migraine. But if you're having a tension headache and you want to get a better stretch in your neck, what I like to do is just push the craniocradial upwards more towards the top of my head and that encourages a little stretch in the neck and it also pushes nicely on the pressure points that are down at the bottom of your skull. If that's not quite enough for you or if you're having like a really bad pain day, the extreme of this is called the stillness position and that's where you push it up further still so that your head comes up out of that hole that's in the craniocradle and is completely supported just by the two bumps that are on the humps of the heart. Does that make sense? So I'll show you. So you push, 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 push until your craniocradle is hitting more on like the occipital part of your head. If you get the Botox injections for migraine, you know they go up your neck and into sort of the base of your head. This hits the top of the Botox trail. Oh, and it's nice. I might just stay here a while. It is so weird to film like a whole video horizontally. <laughs> Alright, the next one is called decompression position. And that's kind of the same thing, but you go like this. Whoop. 180 and lay on it just the same. Your head goes over this edge and this kind of plays into what I was talking about where if this angle isn't quite enough and you want more pressure on that point on your neck, then you can use the part that's a right angle instead of this bigger one. This is called the decompression position because it does a bit more decompression of your neck. Honestly, this is such an effective decompression for me that I feel it all the way down the two main muscles of my back, down into my lower back even, so that's really cool. During my most intense painful migraines, I go like this because I'm crazy, and I use just the point of it to push on the points that are giving me the most pain behind my head, and I feel like that really helps a lot with the acute migraine pain while I'm waiting for a trip down to kick in. That's a good stretch and if you're really careful you can use your hand to sort of rock yourself or you can rock back and forth this way. And it's a big relief because it's minimal effort on your part but it provides a lot of pressure. And again it is firm but it's also quite soft so it doesn't ever hurt me. You gotta do the other side for symmetry. This is so good. This is the best video idea ever. <laughs> I'm just getting my neck all worked out. Yeah. Okay, thoracic. Neck tension is really common with migraines. It's one of the hugest known side effects. And I think for a lot of migraine patients, myself included, definitely, that translates also into trap tension. And it can cause pain, stiffness, soreness down the thoracic spine between the shoulder blades. So I also really love to use the cranio cradle, not just on my cranium, but on my thoracic spine and even my lower back. So let me show you that real quick. The way that I learned to do it on the upper back is to put it back in that base position but then slide it down lower so that it's either on the traps or down in between my shoulder blades. So if I'm about here, it's a very gentle stretch in my traps. Moved it down more so it's right in between my shoulder blades and Oh, that just feels so good. And one of my favorite things to do when it's in this position is to put my arms out in cactus position. I can't do it right now because I don't have a floor and the bed's in the way. But if you um, kind of make your arms like goalposts, like a cactus, you can put them out like this and it just crunches all of those stiff muscles in your upper back. And it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. It's true. Oh yeah. And then of course you have the option to do that 180, turn it around if this angle sits better on your back. Oh, and it does. Again, you have the option to kind of rock back and forth. You can move your arms up and down to give different stretches. If you've ever gotten a massage, you know that you can get those jumps in your muscles when you get it just right. I get that all the time with the cranio cradle when I put it up here. So while I have it here, I like to do shoulder circles and it gets it crunching. I don't know if you can hear that. It's 
like a self massage that's exactly how hard you want it in exactly the spot that you want it. Last but not least, you can do it on your lower back, but with this you need to be kind of careful because your lower back is a little bit more prone to injury and overstretching. So for the lower back, I recommend starting on a bed because it's really soft, and that way the cranial cradle can sink into the bed. And then if you want more pressure, you can go to something like a bench or the couch, and then eventually make your way to the floor. But just be careful about the amount of pressure that you start with on your low back. Oh crap. I lost a wire. Get it back through here. All right, make sure it's recording. Got it. Good. For my low back, the way that I like it best is the opposite of the base position. I like it with the low part facing my tailbone and this part facing my head. I feel like it just provides a little bit more support for me, but I know that some people like it this way because that way this hits the top of your hips with a little bit more pressure. So if you enjoy that, then this would be the direction for you. Right here, like right at the top of your pelvic bone. To me, it just puts a lot of pressure right on those two points in particular. And that's okay, but I can't take it for very long. I don't really like it because it feels kind of unstable on my low back. I like it, let me move my heart monitor. I like it better this way because this supports the low back and this puts just a little bit of pressure on the muscly part. Ah, it's hard being hooked up to a machine all the time. So my pelvis is right about here and this feels good because this is supporting my pelvis and this is pushing into just my muscles. One last big one that I can't believe I forgot on the neck because like I said, it's a big one. If you put it vertically like this, this hits on those two base of your skull points again, the occipital points. And if you put it up this way, you can rock it back and forth and get a very gentle stretch on either side alternating. If you have it this way and you don't like how much these are pushing on your skull, you can turn it around and this side's actually a bit more gentle. I'm not quite sure why. This is really nice because at the same time as you're getting that little bit of pressure in your neck, you're also getting a good stretch all the way down into the tip of your shoulder. And for me, this is a spot that just gets super tense when I'm having a migraine. Wow, that was almost perfect. I would never recommend something to you guys that I didn't use myself. I have recommended it to so many people, I don't know a single person who's been unhappy with it. I have to say the quality is great, it's really well made. Mine is pretty old, but it still looks brand new and I have used it quite a bit. Ah, whoops. There are a couple of different shapes that you can choose from. I chose this one because it seemed a lot more versatile and I have to say I am very happy with how many different positions I've found with something that seems this basic. If you suffer from that neck tension and you want some myofascial release, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out and see if it's something that you want to order. One more thing I'm gonna link in the description below is directly to Cranio Cradle's YouTube. They have a short two or two and a half minute video that goes over 16 different positions that you can do with a Cranio Cradle. And some of them use two different Cranio Cradles so you can get stretching along your whole back. But of course I only have one so I just showed you some of my favorites using one. I really hope this helps you out. I hope that you enjoy it. Hit like on this video if you get neck pain with your migraines, even though nobody likes neck pain. This was one of the most relaxing videos that I've ever filmed, so I'm feeling pretty good about this one. I hope it's not super awkward that I was laying for it. Make sure that you hit subscribe. I was previously posting every Tuesday and Friday, but just because my health is declining right now, I decided to decrease that to once a week. If you want to see more details on that, I'll put a card here for the video that I posted just a few days ago. And that goes into a little bit more detail about why I made the decision to post just on Fridays from now on. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch, and I will see you next Friday.